Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about VPC endpoints. And we will learn that how can we go ahead and use VPC endpoints to access S3 in a private manner from any EC2 instance. Right? So we will go ahead and uh, create the VPC endpoint from scratch and then we will learn about it. All right. So let us go ahead and get started. So I've done the setup here. What we have uh, in front are two EC2 instances. The difference between them is one of the instance uh, is public and another one is private. As you can see, currently both of them are there in stop state. Let me just start them. And uh, you know about our VPC already. The, I'm using our familiar uh, custom VPC, which I have created. Uh, it has got public subnets and it has got private subnets. And uh, the two instances are launched there accordingly. In case you are not clear with the, with the whole VPC thing, I would request you to see my other video where I have explained the VPC creation from scratch and how can you launch public and private instances within that VPC. Now considering, uh, so um, you should be able to see here is the VPC which I've created. It has got two public and two private subnets and accordingly I've launched one public instance and one private instance. You can see currently, uh, uh, you know, the public instance is selected and you can, and below we are able to see its public IP as well. Both of the machines have got private IPs, of course, because any machine which is launched in AWS, you know, that would have a private IP. And you can see both of them have got a private IP address, right? Uh, okay, so what we will do next is we will go ahead and connect to these two machines and then we'll proceed from there. Let me connect to these machines. So I have the key for these machines uh, already in place. Let me pick this public IP and put it here. Okay, I'll go to SSH auth. I'll say browse. When I press on browse, I can go ahead and select a key. So open. Yes. So once I say this, I'm able to get inside the public machine. As you can see the IP address here. And now it says the 10.0.0.46, which is the private IP of my public machine. All right. So I'm connected to this machine. Now, uh, what I did, uh, both of these instances are Amazon Linux, uh, basically of, uh, have been launched using Amazon Linux AMI. So AWS CLI is already configured right on this. And I also did one more thing. I have given uh, these particular machines an IAM role, an IAM role which, is, uh, 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 which has got all the S3 related permissions. Right. So with the, because of that, I do not need to, you know, put any of my keys here and I should be able to run S3 related, uh, S3 related commands. Right. So what I'm going to do next is I'll just run uh, AWS S3 LS here. And I'm able to see uh, like I'm able to see one of the buckets which exists there. Right. Good. So uh, this is the public machine. It is working from here. Let us see. And of course, it has access to internet. That's why I'm able to log into this machine. I'm just pinging google.com and it is working. All good, right? Next is I'm going to connect to the private machine now. And in order to connect to the private machine, I first need to, I cannot connect to it directly. So I need to first uh, connect to this public machine. And then uh, from there, I can connect to the private machine. This time, what uh, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use P agent uh, uh, in order to do this so that I do not have to save the key for my private machine on the public instance, right? So, which is which is uh, an important thing from security perspective. We should not be, you know, storing the keys on any machine as such. All right, so uh, you can go ahead and install P agent. Uh, you can download it uh, free from the internet and install it. Once you once you uh, do that, if you launch P agent, it will give you an option to add keys. Right click on that and press on add keys, and you can go ahead and add any of the key which you know the key of the private instance once it is done 
I'm opening one one new putty session. Um, this again, I will uh, you know I'll be connecting to the public machine first. This time, though, in the SSH auth option, I will click on allow agent forwarding. So this will basically uh, p agent uh, p whatever keys I've saved in p agent that would get forwarded, uh, you know, uh, uh, during this session, and without saving it on on the you know on the public instance, I'll be able to use it. All right, so I'll just say browse. I'll connect to this one. I'll get inside. I'll say open. So, all right. So here is the thing. So I've logged in uh, to the public machine now, as you can see. Good. From here, I want to connect to the private one. So I'll say SSH EC2 hyphen user. At the rate, I'll put the private IP, private machine's IP address. Let me pick this. That's it. I don't need to pass the path of the key because it is already there. Uh, it is already there. We have brought it with the help of agent forwarding. We need not give its physical path. I just press, I'll just press enter, and uh, you can see that I have logged into 10.0.0.22. Good. Now this is completely private machine. From here, if I try to ping Google.com, it should not go through. And we can see it is not going through good right now uh, let us try to uh, execute aws s3 ls i have given the same im role to this machine as well because of which the machine has all the necessary permissions to call s3 related apis if i run aws s3 ls even that doesn't work right the reason is uh, all the S3 endpoints, S3 doesn't live within a VPC, right? So S3 endpoints are public in nature. Whenever we are trying to access uh, S3, we are sending the traffic via public network. But in this case, this is a private machine and it is not having any access to the internet. Hence, it is not able to reach S3 endpoint or it is not able to reach S3. Now, this was a constraint earlier because of which uh, if any customer is running a solution which is completely private in nature and if s3 is involved as part of that solution they always need to have a mechanism to go to internet and then reach s3 right which was not a very great thing so customers asked that uh, while my s3 bucket and my ec2 both are there in amazon one particular region right uh, why sh why should it be going via public right that doesn't make sense there has to be a mechanism so that these two things can talk internally and because of that, uh, the whole concept of S3 endpoint came into picture. What we will do next is we'll go ahead and set up an uh, S3 endpoint. And after that, this private instance itself would be able to reach S3 even when it doesn't have an internet access. So what happens in nutshell, what happens with S3 is with S3 endpoint or with VPC endpoint is once the endpoint is created, the the communication between ec2 instance and s3 bucket would happen using amazon's own private network now it is important to understand that these vpc endpoints can be created for an s3 bucket which is within the same region as the vpc or ec2 is there right you cannot do it across the region uh, earlier these vpc endpoints supported only s3 Recently, the support for DynamoDB has also been started, but it is not in public release, I suppose. It is still in the beta release, but very, very soon it would become public. So the idea is that uh, uh, if uh, with these VPC endpoints, you would be able to reach certain managed services of Amazon via private network right instead of going going via public you will be able to reach just via private and think of a scenario you have a private private instance right this private instance is is probably writing or reading a lot of data to s3 <coughs> earlier without vpc endpoint you would have gone via nat gateway in which case you would be you would be spending all the money like you would be spending a lot of money because your NAT gateway uh, charges depend on the amount of data transferred as well, right? And hence, uh, it would cost you. Whereas in this case, once you create VPC endpoint, the complete communication happens over Amazon's private network and you there is no there is no separate charge for VPC endpoint. It's totally free. So let us go ahead and just see how to create VPC endpoint. Uh, as you can, uh, all right, so let me minimize this. Go to the VPCs. I'll go to endpoints. In the endpoints, say create endpoint. 
right and then select a VPC I'll just choose my VPC select a service currently it is supported only for s3 and because I'm operating in whichever region in North Virginia I'm operating so North Virginia's s3 endpoint is being shown I'll just select this and I'll say full there are other mechanisms that with which you can filter that from where traffic should come or should not you can of course read about it further in the documentation for now I'm choosing full access and I'll just say next step with this uh, and then it says that okay in this VPC there are two route tables uh, with which one uh, do you want to like you need to attach a route so if you'll just choose the addition of routes would happen to that route table I'll show you that as well so I want to attach it to my private route table I'll select this one okay the private one sorry yep and see this read what what was written here when you use an endpoint the source IP addresses from your instances in your affected subnets for accessing the AWS service in the same region will be private IP addresses not public IP addresses so once this change happens using the private IP is the whole connection would happen right and existing connections from your affected subnets to the AWS service that use public IP addresses may be dropped ensure that you don't have critical tasks running in our case that would not happen because with first thing we do not have any critical thing running plus our instances have only private IP address but in case you are doing it with the public ones you will have to consider this so I'll just say create endpoint endpoints are created and I suppose it it should have modified the route table as well let us just see so below we'll check uh, yes it is saying uh, this route my private route table has been modified let us go and look at it I'll click on the route tables on the left and we'll see here is my private route table let us go and see the routes you can see there is uh no there is no entry as of now okay so let us go back to endpoints i guess uh okay i need to press on this configure route tables and uh, you need to say save once we do this now the there should be an entry and you can see here is an entry so we need to we had to do that extra step so once we do that you can see this entry comes understand see this one is not editable you can not go and add those entries right I mean you do not get to delete that as well the whole control is happening from that place if you want to remove this entry you can again go back to endpoints and just uncheck the uncheck uh, this particular route table it will go away so here is that uh, additional entry which has come this particular thing if the destination if the destined traffic or if the traffic is destined to go to s3 send it to this particular vpc endpoint right so this is done all good i'll just uh, go back to my this particular thing once again we will go ahead and first uh, let's try to ping google.com whether google would act be accessible no this is private machine google is still not accessible so no in access to internet good okay now let us go ahead and run our aws s3 ls and you can see that we are able to access s3 so that's all about aws s3 endpoint right in simple uh, simple terms what we did now we created a logical pipe or a logical connectivity from our vpc to the s3 right and hence all the communication from my ec2 instance here on to s3 would happen over the amazon's private network remember there again the s3 bucket and the VPC both should be there in the same region and there only this type of thing you will be able to do so VPC endpoints are great stuff you I would recommend go ahead and try this uh, you know try this in your account so that you are thorough with this uh, there is no charge of using VPC endpoint saves cost for you because or else you are accessing everything via public uh, I hope uh, you liked and understood the concept which we talked about if you did please go ahead and like this video and share it with your friends please then that's the only way it would reach to more people and i would request you to like our blog and facebook page the links for everything would be there in the video uh, in the you know description of this video subscribe to the channel to remain updated about the aws upcoming videos we have playlists you can go and look at the playlist and learn systematically thank you guys i hope you will share this with your friends thank you bye bye